Have you been struggling to reach that 100 sale mark on Etsy? Maybe you're just starting out as an Etsy seller, or maybe you've had your shop open for a while and just nothing seems to be working. Either way, I'm here to help. Getting those first few sales can feel daunting and can really feel like a constant uphill battle sometimes. Trust me when I say I've been there, friend, and I know how deflating that can feel, which is why I wanna come alongside you and help you get there quicker so that those sales start rolling in for you. After eight years of being on Etsy and growing my shop to multiple six figures, I've learned the strategic steps that are necessary for consistent sales. So that's exactly what I'm sharing with you today. These are the things that I wish someone had told me when I first started. So in this video, I'm sharing the top five steps that you need to take to get some momentum going in your shop and reach those first hundred sales on Etsy. But first, if we haven't met yet, I'm Kate. I'm so glad you're here. I'm a wife, mom, Etsy seller, and business coach. And I'm here to help you start and scale your online business so that you can make a full-time income doing what you love. Before we dive into the five steps, I wanna let you know about my free 60-minute Etsy training class. It's a deep dive Etsy strategy training class built on my five-pillar Etsy success formula, where I teach through the five most important things that you can do in your Etsy shop to start and grow a profitable Etsy business that has the potential to truly transform your life and bring you financial freedom. So if you're serious about wanting to make a difference in your life through your Etsy shop, through your Etsy business, then definitely click on the link in the description box below after you watch this video to hop over and watch that free Etsy training class. All right, let's go ahead and dive into step number one that you can take today to start your journey towards that hundred sale mark. And step number one is to choose the right type of product. Now, this may seem like a no-brainer, but stick with me for a minute here. This is so important. You would not believe how many people just decide one day they want to become an Etsy seller and they already have an idea of a product, but they do no research at all to figure out if it's even something people want or are searching for, then to spend hours upon hours to create it, get the listings made, publish it, and put it out there to the world and hear crickets. Remember, Etsy is a search engine, which means it has a search bar. People come in and type a phrase or a keyword that they're thinking of, something they want to find in the search. So we're going to use the fact that this platform is search based to do some research ahead of time and make sure that the keyword phrases that match up with our type of product are things that are actually actively and consistently being searched. So there are two phases to this, in my opinion, in really niching down on the right type of product. The first is to decide on a more broad scale what broad product type you want to offer something in. And the second phase after you know your broad category type is to decide even more specifically what style or trend elements you want to incorporate into your products to make them unique and give them a fresh flair or twist that's uniquely your own. So for instance, I might decide as my broad product category that I want to offer digital templates for business owners. So maybe I'm focusing on offering business branding or slide deck templates or media kits. These would all be examples of product types within that niche for business owners in digital products. But then going on to be more specific with that, what kind of style do I I want to offer these in. Maybe I want to go for a really modern and sleek kind of neutral color vibe, or maybe I want to go for a really vibrant color rainbow vibe. Whatever aesthetic I'm going for, I'm going to think about colors, fonts. If it's a physical item, I might be thinking about materials and patterns. I call these trend elements, and these are things that I'm going to incorporate to make sure that I'm not only offering a broad product type that's in demand, but offering these products in a style that people are looking for as well. I have a free trend elements cheat sheet that's linked below if you feel like you need some help in terms of determining what sort of trend elements you could incorporate into your products, then definitely click that link and grab that. It'll give you over 85 prompts for different types of trend and style elements that you can be thinking of. You definitely want to niche down as much as possible on here because you're going to be positioning yourself as the expert that specializes in one specific type of thing. This doesn't mean that you can't branch out later, but the more you can niche down and really get clear on who your target customer is, who you are creating these specific products for, then when people land on your shop page, it's going to look very professional, very cohesive, and it's going to make you appear as more of an expert in that field. Now, one way I love to validate products when I'm doing product analysis, product research to make sure that something I'm thinking of is actually in demand is by using my favorite Etsy research tool, which is Sales Samurai. So here on Sales Samurai, I can come to the search tool where I can do a keyword search and type in any keyword I'm thinking of. So here I've just typed in the 
the short tail keyword mug. And I can see here the estimated search volume on Etsy for that keyword is 26,595. That shows me that there are a lot of people consistently searching for the term mug on Etsy each month. So this just quickly validates the idea that I could sell mugs on Etsy, but let's say I wanna get more specific with it. And I'm trying to decide if I want to offer mugs with let's say a cute image of some blueberries, or maybe I could go the route of offering mugs with funny quotes. So let's compare those two. Let's type in blueberry mug. So we can see the results here for blueberry mug. There's only an estimated 17 searches per month, which is not very high at all. Now that's not a conclusive no, I would definitely wanna go on Etsy and maybe type this in and just see if there's any listings that are doing well with that. But just off my first basic search of this term blueberry mug, I would say that is pretty low search volume. Let's try the term funny mug. So we can see here the term funny mug has much higher estimated search volume on Etsy per month, which is 775. So if we were going to be creating a mug and deciding what type we want, we might wanna go forward with the idea of the funny quote mugs. Of course, we wanna do further research by going on Etsy itself and typing in whatever keyword we're thinking of to see what the best sellers look like, to see how many listings there are with that, to get some inspiration from those best selling listings. But Sales Samurai is a great place to start if you're just wanting to find out the estimated search volume for a keyword that you're thinking of that would relate to your product to get some direction on where to start. I do have a free three-day trial for Sales Samurai linked in the description box below, and you can use my code KATE20 to get 20% off your subscription if you decide to continue using Sales Samurai beyond the free trial. I love Sales Samurai so much and want to thank them for sponsoring this portion of today's video. Okay, step number two after you have decided on the right product type is to come up with a strategic marketing plan. There's this sort of idea sometimes with with Etsy sellers that they can just start an Etsy shop and because there are millions upon millions of shoppers on the platform already that as soon as they hit publish on their shop, all of these shoppers are gonna be automatically brought to their shop and they're gonna start making sales with no effort. I hate to break it to you if that was you, but it does take a lot of work up front to be found and discovered on Etsy. Yes, Etsy is amazing because of the fact that it has such a large built-in organic audience and the potential for that traffic to be filtered to your shop, but there are also so many different sellers on Etsy. So it's up to you to really get some momentum going in the beginning to get traction for your shop to start ranking higher, becoming more visible, for that traffic than to come into your shop naturally and organically. Before this can start happening, you have to bring in some of those first few sales on your own through your own marketing efforts. I like to think of it sort of like building a fire, right? If you were to start trying to build a fire from scratch, it would be a lot more difficult to get it going in the beginning. It might just be a little small spark, a little small flame that you have to continue tending and growing and building. To get it to a larger fire, you would have to continually be feeding it things like maybe dried grass and leaves and tinder, sticks, eventually logs. You would be blowing on it to give it oxygen some. You would have to be very delicately and intentionally being proactive about continuing to feed that fire and build it. And then eventually, if you did it the right way, it would grow into a larger fire, which then wouldn't need as much constant tending at a certain point. It would have the momentum. It would already be built to a certain point where it would only need it every now and then, and it could continue mostly on its own. But in those beginning stages, it does take a lot of intentionality and strategic marketing to get that fire built. So to me, this is very similar to starting a brand new Etsy shop, getting those first few sales rolling in, getting some traction going. And then once you do start getting consistent sales and things start building, the Etsy algorithm does take note of your listings in your shop and it's more organic and natural and it does start feeding shoppers automatically to your shop the more you rank higher. So my point in telling you all of this is to let you know that you do have to be very intentional in the beginning. It won't always be like that with marketing, but especially if you haven't gotten your first 100 sales yet, you definitely need to be coming up with a strategic plan for promoting and bringing in traffic on your own. You wanna come up with a plan to jumpstart as many of those first few sales as you can. This could look like launching your shop to the public with a big discount. This could be finding influencers to collaborate with. This looks like spreading the information about your shop anywhere and everywhere you can think of, like in Facebook groups, blogs, finding brand ambassadors, giving special discount and coupon codes, maybe even 
considering trying out Etsy ads if you have a little bit of a budget for that. But whatever marketing efforts you decide upon, you just wanna make sure you're being intentional and proactive in planning those out ahead of time. All right, step number three is to build out and optimize your shop and listings. When we talk about optimization, we're talking about it in two different categories. We're talking about optimizing your shop as a whole and then optimizing your individual listings. And just side note here, optimization is just basically making sure that every part of both your shop and listings is filled out in a way that's going to bring in traffic and best position your shop to make sales. So first let's talk about the few things to consider for shop optimization. The first thing I'll mention here is your shop name. You wanna make sure that you have a great name that's both easy and clear to understand and memorable. You don't want something that's so unique and out there that nobody's going to be able to remember it or spell it easily or come back to it if they wanna find you again. Secondly, you wanna make sure that you have your about section and your policy section on your shop completely filled out as thoroughly as possible. This step in and of itself automatically helps rank your listings higher in the search. So you definitely don't want to skip over that. Next is to consider having really professional business branding. These are things like your logo, your profile picture, your shop banner, the colors you're using and all of those, the fonts you're using, even the way that your photos are taken for your listings. Everything branding wise should feel very cohesive and professional. You can create these yourself or you can hire a branding professional to create them for you, but you just wanna make sure that they seem very professional and quality and everything works together to be aesthetically pleasing. You also wanna make sure that you use your shop announcement, which is at the top of your shop to announce important information. And if you have something like an email list, you can also put links there for people to copy and paste into their browser to join your email list. You might wanna put information like coupon codes or discounts or flash sales that you have going on. But that shop announcement is prime real estate as it's at the top of your shop and that's something that can really help grab the buyer's attention and communicate important information. You also wanna think about your thumbnail images for your listing. So I'm putting this under the whole shop optimization as opposed to the individual listing optimization because if you think about looking at your shop as a whole, you're gonna see all of those listing thumbnail images together and you wanna make sure that those first listing images, those thumbnails work together cohesively in the style of the images as well as the coloring if you have props or backgrounds that are colored. You just wanna make sure it all flows together with your brand colors and doesn't seem piecemeal. So you don't want just random background colors and random props that are different colors in your photos. You wanna make sure everything's working together aesthetically. Now let's talk about the key components for individual listing optimization. You can probably guess the first thing I'm gonna say because I talk about it all the time. It's so important and that is SEO. This stands for search engine optimization and this is how we're using keywords and plugging them into our list listings in strategic places to help the algorithm know what our listing is all about and rank us high in the search results. We want to find highly searched keyword phrases, the things that people actually are already typing in consistently into the Etsy search, and we want to use those in the strategic places of our listing, which are the title, the tags, the description, the categories, and the attributes. Plugging those highly searched keyword phrases into those five sections of every listing is automatically going to give the algorithm a little sign that says, choose me. This is what this listing is all about. Rank me high for this search keyword. Now you can do this kind of keyword research for free just by using the Etsy search bar, but you can also use an Etsy research tool. Like I mentioned before, Seal Samurai is my go-to to help you level up and find those keyword phrases that are going to be highly searched. The next thing on this list is to consider your photo style. I cannot stress how important your photographs are in making use of that photo slot section where you have the option for 10 photos photos that can give that shopper images of your product from different angles, showing different details. You want to make as much use of that listing photo section as possible. You want to make sure that your photos are really top quality by considering things like natural lighting, the crop, the sizing, the background, even the style. If you're interested in learning more on this in detail, SEO and photos are actually two of the five pillars that I talk about in my five pillar Etsy success formula masterclass. So just as a reminder, that's linked in the description box below. If you want a deeper dive into both of those two pillars, as well as the other three that are part of that system, and you can watch that totally for free after this, just click that link in the description box to hop over and watch it. We also want to consider having a really well-written description, which again, weaves in our keyword phrases that we're targeting. We want to make sure our listing is at the right price point for the buyer, which is usually sort of a sweet spot in the middle of the range of what we see for similar listings. We never want to be the highest priced 
or the lowest price, we want to find a really healthy middle ground that provides us a healthy profit, but is also still competitive. And if at all possible, it's great to offer customization options or variations that the buyer can choose. Even if they're things as simple as a few different color selections or size selections, having those variations included in your listing can really give you the leg up compared to maybe a similar listing that the shopper is considering, but doesn't offer variations. Shoppers love to customize things. Even if it's not completely personalized, they love to have an option or two for making it exactly what they want. So at the end of the day, we want our listings to be optimized both for the shopper and the algorithm. The way we're going to optimize for the shopper is we're going to be drawing them in with things like aesthetically pleasing images and the correct price point. And the way we're going to optimize for the algorithm to be actually visible in the search is by using highly searched keyword phrases. All right. So once we have done these first three steps, the next thing we're going to talk about is launching your shop with an incentive. You may have heard me say this before, but I am a big fan of offering incentives to your customer because this a lot of times will give you the edge over the competition in terms of making your offer for that buyer irresistible. An incentive is basically just a reward that you're giving your customers an added bonus in return for them making the purchase. So this could look like a discount code or a flash sale. This could look like free shipping. This could look like offering a free item with purchase. There are a lot of different ways you can offer incentives or rewards to buyers, but you definitely want to make whatever it is known to the public with your marketing efforts and promotions. Now, technically, when you open your Etsy shop, the first time you actually go through the few steps to set up your account and open your shop, your shop technically is open at that point. But I would recommend not doing a big public launch until you have, let's say, maybe 12 to 15 listings in your shop ready to go. Your Etsy shop is still technically open before that, but it probably won't be found very much organically in the search until you start making some sales and getting some traction in your shop. So I would say to plan for a big, fun public launch where you shout it from the rooftops on social media with your email list, you're spreading the word to everyone when you're ready to actually put it out there and start receiving sales. I don't believe you need to have hundreds upon hundreds of listings in your shop before you do your big public launch. I think probably 15 is fine. You just want to make sure you have enough for that first shop page to feel somewhat established and full. Pairing a lot of smart promotional strategy with your launch incentive is sure to bring in at least a few sales in those first few days that you announce it to everyone. So step number five is to regularly add new listings and continue promoting. It can be really tempting to do the big first launch and then think, well, what is next? You always want to stay intentional and proactive about growing your shop, being creative about trying new things, offering different incentives, discounts, adding new products to your shop, and even pivoting sometimes in terms of product type or style if you find that something's not working. The more listings you have in your shop, the more your chances to be found increase. Now, I don't believe that you need to sacrifice the quality of your listings just to get a ton of listings up in your shop. I would always value quality of listing over quantity but I do think you need to regularly be considering what new products you can come out with and trying different things until you find out what really takes for your shop. And as I mentioned before, you definitely don't want to stop promoting after your first launch. Your promotion and marketing should be an ongoing continuing thing where you're always thinking about how to grow your social media audience, how to start building an email list, maybe partnering with brand ambassadors to promote your products. Again, be super creative. Think out of the box for things that you could do to spread the word about your shop and continue being really intentional about doing that. I personally work from what I call my three-step marketing roadmap. This is where I use social media marketing, email marketing, marketing and influencer marketing to build my shop and my business. And this is the marketing strategy that I teach my students and I go over in my five pillar Etsy success formula masterclass. So again, that's linked below. If you want to watch that for free, I go through step-by-step step how to do that and how to come up with a smart marketing strategy. And I know that will be super helpful for you. Now, if you're new to Etsy and you just need the basics laid out for you, I do have an Etsy 101 playlist that I'll have teed up here. You can just click or tap on the square on the screen right now to hop over and watch that. And it's a whole playlist of Etsy foundational basics for those who are just starting and just need the basic rundown of what Etsy is all about and how to start building your shop. Talk soon, friends. Okay.